Hey everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're gonna to talk about aggregation in Java. We'll talk about what it is, and we'll see an example of it, and we'll look at how we can diagram it using UML diagrams. So let's begin, what is aggregation? Simply put, aggregation is when an object has a reference to another object. So you can make something quite a bit more complex. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of this. An example is worth a thousand words. So we'll go ahead and create a new project. And we're going to do a Java application and we'll just name this ag demo and my package name will just be stuff. Okay. And we will create, we will add two classes to our project. So we will do a class. I oh, named customer and that class will simply have a customer's name and their address, but we'll make the name a string and we'll make the address its own separate class. So class customer and class customer is just going to have string name, which we will make private. And then it's going to have an address reference, address, address. Now we're gonna have to define this class, which we will do in just a second, but let's add a constructor for customer and it will accept as an argument the customer's name which we will assign to the member variable named name it's name equals name and then we'll have an access for the mutator public set name which will just pretty much do the same thing as the constructor so this name equals name and then we'll have an accessor and return types for this should be void public string get name and then we're going to return this dot name now let's go add our class address let's go define that we'll add that to our project here so to our package so let's go to files open that up and add it to our stuff so new class this is going to be address so finish now let's define this class and we will just have some strings We'll just do something like string street and we'll do city state and zip code and we'll make that private and we'll add a constructor to update those things. So public address string S string C string ST and string Z and the constructor will initialize those private memory variables. Now we're going to need to have a couple of accessors for this examples so string get street and we'll do a similar thing for city, state, and zip. Okay, now if we go back to customer, you'll see that now the red squiggle is no longer there because an address is a thing. So this is aggregation because the address reference is included. This is a reference to another object, to an address object. Now we will need to instantiate that object in our constructor. So we'll do something like this, add, equals new address. But keep in mind that the constructor in our address object is gonna have four things that it needs, right? The street, city, state, and zip. So what we can do is we can add that information to our constructor here. So we'll do string city, string street, and then string state, and then string zip. Okay, and in this way, we'll be able to pass those to the constructor of the address object, right? So when we instantiate a customer class, we'll get a customer object, which is going to have its name initialized with the first argument. And then the second thing it's gonna do is create this new address object, which will be initialized with the street argument, the city argument, and the state argument, and the zip argument, which will all be copied to here, 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 and then assigned to here, 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 here. Now let's go back to customer. And so what we'll do is we'll add a get street, get city, get state, get zip accessors here. So public string get street. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna simply return what's returned by the address accessor dot get street. Okay, so it's this address object that is keeping track of, you know, the one that we instantiated here and whose address we assigned to this reference, it's keeping track of all the address information, right? Because it makes sense because this aggregation models the has a relationship, the has a relationship, has a. So a customer has an address. So it makes sense that we have an address object that the customer class has a reference to because a customer has a address. And so we'll ask the address object to get us the street and then return it. Okay. So we'll also do a similar thing for the city, get city. And we'll do a similar thing for the state and the zip. 
So let's go see an example of this. We'll go back to our main method and we will just instantiate a customer object and then we will retrieve the values from that customer object. So customer C equals new customer. Now what do we have to do? We have to put the name. So John Doe, we have to put the address. So 555 Main Street, we have to put the city, we'll say Clayton, we have to put the state, we'll say Mississippi, and we have to put a zip code. So we'll say 01345. Okay, now once we've done all that, we'll be able to retrieve that information using the accessors. So system.out.println, let's show the name. And so we'll do something like this. We'll say c.getName, and then we'll just retrieve the street address. Okay, so we'll do street. So we'll do c.getStreet, and then we'll test it. And so this is useful, you know, aggregation is useful for code reuse. It's also one of the features of object-oriented programming. So here is the output. So there's the name and then there's the street. So let's trace through the code here. So this line right here, we instantiated a new customer object and passed these arguments to it, right? So those arguments got assigned to the parameters here, and then the name got assigned to the private member name here, but then the constructor instantiated a new address object and we pass the street as an argument to the address constructor, the city to the city, the state to the state, and the zip to the zip. Now if we go to the address class, all those values got copied to the addresses parameter list and then assigned to its variables. And then when we printed out the name, we asked the customer to invoke its get name accessor. And so that simply returned the contents of this. But when we asked it for the street address, that was just a little bit more, a little bit more complicated because we invoked the get street method for class customer, but the get street method turned around and invoked the get street method in the address class. So it asked the address object, hey, can you please give me the street address that you're storing? And it replied, yes, it, and it returned that street address which it then returned back to the function that called it and combined that, concatenated that to this other string, and then we printed it out. So we had this chain of calls. We had these different objects all interacting with each other. So maybe we can make this a little bit more clear if we were to do something like this, right? It's string st equals adra.getStreet. And then you can see then that we'll just return the st. So it's a chain of events. So ask customer, hey, tell me what the street is. And then it turns around and asks the address object that it has to get the street that it's storing and then takes that and returns it. So let's see what the UML could look like for this. Okay, so we had class customer and in class customer had a private string named name, and then it had a constructor that was public named customer, and that had quite a big parameter list. So it had a string named name, a string named street, a string named city, a string named state, and a string named zip. So you can see all of that right there. And then it also had the various setters and getters, the various accessors and mutators. And so these methods would simply just be asking the address object to return the values that the address object was storing. And so let us not forget what makes this aggregation is the fact that it has a reference to another object. So that was named adra, which was private, and it was type address. Okay, so what else did we have? We had class address. So let's add that to our diagram. So now we need a particular arrow to indicate the relationship. So what is that arrow gonna be? It is going to be an open-headed arrow from the thing being possessed to the thing doing the possessing. So something like this, a customer has a address. Okay, so now you know a little bit about class aggregation. We looked at what it is, we looked at its benefits, we saw an example program that utilizes it, and we saw how to represent it in a UML class diagram. As usual, if you're a student of mine, you have questions about any of the content in this video or in any of the videos in our course, please feel free to stop by my Zoom office hours or send me an email via Canvas. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.